Now to the Moore Justice Center in Brevard County, Florida. Two charges, assault and resisting. You have the public. Mr. Where Rumble. public defender Andrew Weinstock and his client are appearing before Judge John Murphy, whose voice you hear. Defender, public defender, what do you want to do? Have they filed? They have. I'm not waiting. <sighs> All right, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? I'm not waiting. <laughs> you want to set up for trial, set up for trial. Judge Murphy wants the defendant to waive his right to a speedy trial because the court's schedule's backed up. Weinstock isn't budging, and tensions are mounting. If I had a rock, I would throw it at you right now. You know, Stop so pissing me off. Just sit down. I'll take care of it. I don't need your help. No, sit down. You know I'm the public defender. I have a right to be here, and I have a right to stand I said, and represent sit down. my clients. If you want to fight, let's go out back, and I'll just beat let's your ass. ass. They both head to the hallway behind the courtroom, just out of the view of the court's cameras. Believe it or not, they get into a physical altercation until Judge Murphy returns to the courtroom alone. Thank you. I will catch my breath eventually. Man, I'm an old man. Once Judge Murphy catches his breath, he continues with the rest of the hearings without Weinstock present. Your choices, considering there's probably going to be a changeover in personnel, are setting it for trial June 9th, or if you were wanting to waive speedy, we would set it for July 15th. I would like to get it done as fast as possible. That doesn't help me. The incidents investigated by the Florida Judicial Qualifications Commission, who charged Judge John Murphy with threatening to commit violence against an assistant public defender, engaging in a physical altercation with counsel, and resuming his docket while defendants were without counsel. The case eventually reaches the Florida Supreme Court, which orders the immediate suspension and permanent removal of Judge Murphy from his post. Andrew Weinstock later resigns from the public defender's office. Oh my God, take me home. We now go to Brimfield Township, Ohio, where County Judge Rebecca Doherty isn't presiding over her courtroom. She's making demands at the local police station. Do me a favor and have a seat so we can do our job. Oh, Larry, I'm not going to call anybody yet, OK? We have stuff we have to do. I'm going to tell you now to call Lieutenant Lindbergh now. Have a seat. Call him Or I'm going to put you in the cell. So why is this judge so aggravated? Let's go back earlier in the night. Hello? An officer's body camera records as he approaches an SUV that's crashed off the side of a snow-covered road. Are you okay? No, I'm not. What's going on? Ma'am, you've got vomit down here in your door. 300 deal. Have you been drinking? Yes. Okay. Do you have your ID handy? I'm Becky Doherty, I'm the judge. Happy. Your judge? <laughs> to be more specific, she is the county's common pleas court judge, 55-year-old Rebecca Doherty. Are you kidding me? Am I, am I kidding about what? I am absolutely out of my mind with... You're intoxicated. You. I am so intoxicated. The officer's body cam continues to record as the judge is escorted into booking. Oh my God, take me home. OK. Have a seat. Let me call Lindbergh. Have a seat. No. Rebecca, call. listen, this whole thing is being recorded. Do not do something you are going to regret call tomorrow. Larry Limbert is actually Major Larry Limbert of the county sheriff's office. Do no. me a favor and have a seat so we can do our job. Oh, Larry I'm Limbert. not going to call anybody yet, OK? We have stuff we have to do. Will you please have a seat? You're trying to walk out the door and you're almost falling down. Can you please have a seat? I'm not falling down. Have a Call seat. Call Larry Limburg. Rebecca, I will put you in one of the cells if you okay. do that. I'm Call trying Larry to Limburg. really play. Now. Have a seat. Call him now. Call him now. And that's not the judge's now. only request. What can I do for you? Drink. Okay. Water. We just literally told you 10 seconds ago that we're getting you a drink of water. He's out front right now getting mm, you the glass. Not 10 seconds ago. I want a drink of water now. Thank you. 
called Larry Lambert. I tried him, go, ma'am. He didn't answer. Really? Do you want the water? The water? Yeah, I do. Okay. Larry Lambert. Okay. Larry Lambert. After refusing to take a breathalyzer, Judge Doherty is charged with operating a vehicle while under the influence of alcohol. Give me my phone so I can make a phone call. Okay. Your phone is in a puddle of vomit in your car, which is I on the side it. of. Can I finish? Absolutely. Which is on the side of the road that you crashed into. Yes. The absolutely. tow company is out there trying to get it out. However, it is extremely snowy and slippery I out. They are totally not able to get the get vehicle it. out so far. Totally so your good. phone is off the table right now. We don't have access to it. Mm -hmm. Judge Doherty receives a fine of $1,075 and 180 days in jail, which the presiding judge reduces to $375 and three days in jail. Her driver's license is suspended for a year, and she's ordered to complete a driver's intervention program. Next, we head to Cleveland's Municipal Court, where Judge Pinky Carr is presiding. It's March 17, 2020. The country's in the early stages of the COVID-19 pandemic. The person is not here, as I've noted all week. Corona, day three. Because of health risks, Cleveland's administrative court has issued an order that all hearings for defendants who are not in jail have been postponed. So why is Judge Carr's courtroom still open for all business? Docket number 31, bond is set at 2,500. It's a question on the mind of assistant public defender Mark Jablonski. Is the court having a docket tomorrow? Oh, yeah. Nothing stopped for me. My cases go on. Does that apply to jails only? No. Anyone that shows up. Not everybody watches the news. I actually had people yesterday. I had people today. Yeah, I'm not going to do that to people. The judge's statement contradicts the administrative order regarding COVID-19. And Jablonski wants an explanation. If we are able to get a hold of any of our clients who are scheduled for tomorrow who are not in jail, can we tell them that No, no. Mm -mm. So, so the court's administrative order regarding the I'm here. I'm here. If people show up, I'm here. So no, don't call people and tell them not to show up. If they show up, I'm here. But this judge isn't just allowing people to show up. She's punishing those who don't. In the preceding days, she'd issued several arrest warrants, which in court terminology is known as a capius. Capius, final set of 5,000. If officer present, no defendant, capius will be issued. Continuing his exchange regarding the order, Jablonski asked the judge about her position one last time. Yeah, don't do that. Yes, sir. Hi, for the third time, okay. I will be thank here. You. If people show up, I am here. OK, thank you. OK. 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 Minutes later, after seven OKs, Jablonski exits the courtroom. But Judge Carr, still apparently baffled by the attorney's question about postponing his client's hearings, discusses it with her staff. I'm like, stop it. Not everybody watched the news. Hey, I'm going to call him and tell him don't come. I'm sure he is. Look, idiot. But soon after, when the local media hears about the arrest warrants, the judge denies it. If people came to court, and they were willing to, willing to risk their health, I figured I would return the favor. As far as issuing warrants for their arrest, absolutely untrue. But when the video showing the opposite becomes public. Capius, find a set of 10,000. Capius, find a set of 5,000. You know what, I'll just put a straight Capius on it. The Ohio Supreme Court orders Judge Carr to temporarily stop presiding on all criminal or traffic cases. And an investigation by the Ohio Board of Professional Conduct is launched. Carr faces sanctions which could range from a warning to full disbarment. Now to the Seminole County Circuit Court in Sanford, Florida. It's 6.30 p.m. 
and a long one-day trial has come to an end. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of driving under the influence. That defendant is 46-year-old Lisette Gonzalez. Although a verdict for Gonzalez's DUI charge has already been reached, her attorney makes a final plea to Judge Fred Schott. Your Honor, not enough evidence presented for the jury to find the verdict that they did. They didn't do all the, the, the field sobriety examinations that should have been done. During the trial, it was revealed that Gonzalez was never given a breathalyzer or had her blood drawn. Yet, arresting officer Michael Wagner recorded that she tested above the legal limit of .08 in his official report. Wagner claimed it was an honest mistake, but observed what he believed to be intoxication. I respectfully ask that this court grant the judgment notwithstanding the verdict. The attorney is asking the judge to use his power to overturn the jury's verdict and acquit the defendant. It's a move rarely seen in the courtroom. All right. This isn't a purely circumstantial case. And so I'm going to deny the motion for JOA. It looks like the case is closed, but Judge Schott has other business with Gonzalez. Now, we have this other case for driving a license suspended. Two months after her DUI arrest, Gonzalez was ticketed for driving with a suspended license. Problem is, the only reason her license was suspended was because of the inaccurate paperwork filed by Officer Wagner. I want to be enlightened. It was a mistake, admittedly, by Michael Wagner. I know. He testified to that today. He caused her to have her driver's license suspended for, for at least a few months for nothing. So are you going to know across that case, or am I going to get mad at you today? The judge is addressing prosecutor Diana Mears. Perhaps you can get mad at me, Your Honor, but at this point... Why wouldn't you... Um, wait a minute. Did you hear the uncontroverted testimony of this officer? Your Honor... Then I want you taking him up on Honor. perjury. Your Honor... Will you take him up for he perjury? Did, he admitted it was a mistake, Your Honor. No, but he lied. He lied on a sworn Absolutely citation. Absolutely not, Your Honor, and that is... That is not true. I'm dismissing. I'm dismissing. I am. I, I am dismissing. I am dismissing this charge. No, I'm dismissing the charge. The judge has just dismissed the defendant's upcoming case, but he's not done yet. This whole case was fishy, and I have no idea how the. You know what? You know what? I'm granting. I am, I, I'm, I'm, I'm rescinding the sentence. I'm granting the JOA. Judge Schott has just reversed his decision and acquitted the defendant on the spot. So you're granting it because you don't agree with the state's decision on the I'm granting the charge. JOA in fairness. In fairness, because yeah. you don't like the state's decision today, Your Honor, on the case? No, you, you're not. Okay. Now that I consider what Officer Wagner testified to and how many times he basically tripped over himself just to arrest this lady, with no real probable cause. You're done. Motion to JOA is granted. And you're not going to provide a written order on that? Nope. You want to appeal me? Appeal me. Thank you, Your Honor. The case should have never been done. Never. Thank you for letting us know that, Your Honor. The defendant, Lisette Gonzalez, walks out of the courtroom free of all charges. <laughs> We're in Vancouver, Washington, where a 16-year-old is in juvenile court after violating his probation. He's joined by his mother. Next to them is the court clerk. But noticeably absent is his attorney. As Judge John Woolley inquires about the lawyer's whereabouts, the teen addresses the court. I would like to fight for myself and not have an attorney. It appears this young defendant wants to play Perry Mason, but Judge Woolley doesn't necessarily think that's a good idea. Oh, that's not a smart play. That's, that's like I'm going out onto the field with the New York Yankees and you've never even learned how to play baseball. That's fine. It's not. I'm not going to do that. You're going to have an attorney assist you in this matter. I'm not going to let him fly solo and walk into a court of law and try to practice law when he hasn't even yeah, been in high just school. I just want to say I'm guilty. So I'll just take what I can. We're sending it over to Tuesday. What Judge Woolley doesn't clarify is that he believes a juvenile can't legally plead guilty without an attorney present. I'm not going to accept an admission at this time. So put it on for Tuesday for either admit or deny, or for whether or not there'll be a replacement of the attorney. So far, it looks like Judge Woolley's doing everything in his power to help this defendant. But when the teen continues to question him, why can't I just admit today? judge loses his temper. 
Because I'm doing my job, sir. My job requires that I protect your constitutional rights, you as an American citizen. That's my charge. And if you're too stupid to know that what I'm trying to do is protect you, then let me spell it out for you. So step one is I bring the case back with an attorney, and then we talk. Notice as the court clerk tries to signal to the teen to be quiet. Because I'm doing my job, sir. Then scores some brownie points with the boss by backing him up. And our state Supreme Court has backed you up on that. Too. They have. And I'm sure the U.S. Supreme would, too. And listen carefully as mom expresses her dissatisfaction with the judge's choice of words. The state Supreme Court has backed you up on that. Too. They have. And I'm sure the U.S. Supreme would, too. Okay. You're going to take this and you're going to have a seat. Um, you're going to be back in court. Actually, Perhaps right sensing the mood shift in the courtroom, Judge Woolley offers an apology. And my apologies to everyone in this courtroom. I very rarely lose my temper. If you want to call it that. But when I do, it's usually because someone is too stupid to recognize that I'm trying to help them. There are just a few issues with Judge Woolley's backhanded apology. One, he's just doubled down on calling the defendant stupid. But you said because someone is too stupid to recognize that I'm trying to help them. And two, I very rarely lose my temper. Problem is, that's not entirely true. Over a two and a half year period, Judge Woolley was cited for four separate incidents by the Washington State Commission on Judicial Conduct for, quote, a pattern of discourteous, impatient, and undignified behavior. Judge John Woolley would later receive a public reprimand for his ill-tempered courtroom conduct. Oh, that's not a smart play. Thanks for being a fan of Court Cam. Subscribe to A&E to never miss a new video and catch full episodes on AETV.com.